Hey, tennis fans, I'm Grace Carter with your Tennis Now News Update. Well, Andy Murray wore the Union Jack on his chest and carried Great Britain on his back. Capping a brilliant season, Andy defeated David Goffin to clinch Britain's first Davis Cup in 79 years. The world number two sealed a 3-1 to one victory with that superb shot. The final score could read Murray 3, Belgium 1. Andy accounted for all three points, partnering with his brother Jamie to win the doubles and sweeping both singles matches, sending British fans into a frenzy. It is Britain's 10th Davis Cup and the first since 1936. Andy Murray now joins John McEnroe as just the second man to post an 8-0 singles record in a Davis Cup championship season since the start of the world group play in 1981. Some key facts from the final. Including his doubles matches, Andy accounted for 11 of the 12 points Britain produced, beating the USA, France, Australia, and Belgium. Murray joins Andre Agassi, his boyhood hero, and Rafa Nadal in becoming the third man in the Open Era history to win Wimbledon and Olympic singles gold medal and the Davis Cup. Also, Andy raised his Davis Cup singles record to 27-2. Scotland's national newspaper called it St. Andy's Day. And here's some trivia for you. Who are the only two men to ever beat Murray in Davis Cup? Stan Wawrinka did it back in 2005, and Fabio Fognini from Italy did it two years ago. Social media, as you can imagine, lit up after that big win, including tweets from the Queen, British Prime Minister David Cameron, actor and tennis fanatic Kevin Spacey, even a tweet from Novak Djokovic. His proud mom, Judy Murray, summed it up best with this tweet moments after the match point, hashtag mission accomplished. Good for Andy. You know, Andy is a huge boxing fan and he says he actually stayed up late to watch Tyson Fury win the world heavyweight title the night before he won the Davis Cup. And if Andy had to step into the ring with a fellow player, who do you think he would choose to fight? Well, he told the BBC he'd most like to mix it up with his friend and former Davis Cup teammate, Tim Henman, and here's why. If the, we used, Jimmy was obviously 15 months older, so he was bigger, stronger, and smarter than me. And when we would wrestle, uh, he would uh, only let me win when we were fighting for the women's belt. And you know, practice makes perfect. Top players find time to practice even without a court or a tennis ball for that matter. Fernando Verdasco starts the day hitting four hands in his hotel room. Rafa Nadal smoothed out his swings in the hallway before hitting the court in London. In other news now, the IPTL launches its second season this week, and the top players already gearing up for the mixed team competition. Novak Djokovic joins the Singapore Slammers, which also features Belinda Bencic, Nick Kyrgios, and Carlos Moya. Nole says the team format puts a new spin on the sport. It's going to uh, bring something new to the sport and um, come up with a format that actually allows players to have some really good matches, really competitive matches, but again, have fun on the court. This team spirit is uh, something we don't get to see and experience uh, as players on the tour that often. So. Several French stars, including Christina Mladenovic, Gail Monfils and Richard Gasquet, traveled together. Maria Sharapova looked chic heading for Japan, where she's going to be joining Daniela Huntkova, Kei Shikori, and Murat Safin, playing for the Japan Warriors. And before striking his first shot, Ivo Karlovic was already a winner, finding elbow room in the team uniform. All right, we're going to leave you now with a look at Serena Williams bearing it all in the new 2016 Pirelli calendar, shot in black and white by famed photographer Annie Leibovitz. Enjoy. That's the news for now. I'm Grace Carter. We'll see you next time on Tennis Now.